Hey y'all, welcome to Faithfully Bound. In this video, I would love to do a Bible journaling entry with you. I'm using my Bible Gateway app on my tablet for the commentary, and I am using my Spiral Bible to do my Bible journaling in. And the type of Bible journaling I'm doing in this video is strictly note taking and highlighting because I'm studying. So I just want to take my notes and highlight and learn as I go. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple asked an alms. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand, and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he leaping up stood, and walked, and entered with them into the temple, walking, and leaping, and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. And they knew that it was he which sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple, and they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. And as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon's, greatly wondering. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, Ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Or why look ye so earnestly on us, as though by our own power or holiness we had made this man to walk? The God of Abraham, and of Isaac, and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, have glorified his son Jesus, whom he delivered up, and denied him in the presence of Pilate, when he was determined to let him go. But ye denied the Holy One and the just, and desired a murderer to be granted unto you, and killed the Prince of Life, whom God hath raised from the dead, whereof we are witnesses. And his name through faith in his name hath made this man strong, whom ye see and know, yet, the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. And now, brethren, I would that through ignorance ye did it, as did also your rulers. But those things, which God before had shewed by the mouth of all his prophets, that Christ should suffer, he hath so fulfilled. Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. And he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you, whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things, which God hath spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. For Moses truly said unto the fathers, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren, like unto me, him shall ye hear in all things whatsoever he shall say unto you. And it shall come to pass, that every soul, which will not hear that prophet, shall be destroyed from among the people. Yeah, and all the prophets from Samuel and those that follow after, as many as have spoken, have likewise foretold of these days. Ye are the children of the prophets, and of the covenant which God made with our fathers, saying unto Abraham, And in thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. Unto you first God, having raised up his son Jesus, sent him to bless you, in turning away every one of you from his iniquities. The lame man was carried and laid at the gate of the temple. He could not do this for himself and he could not go into the temple. They laid him outside the gate so that he could ask for alms for the people who did enter the temple. So he could do nothing for himself and he needed help. Just like sometimes we can do nothing for ourselves, and we need help spiritually. And we cannot get this help without God. And they say to him, 
look on us. And Peter says to look on us with your eyes, but it points to looking on them with their eyes, but their mind is on the Lord and how they fix their mind on the Lord. So looking to them because they fix their mind on the Lord and we must fix ourselves on God and rejoice in the Lord as he was healed and rejoiced in the healing. And of course, this was only done through our Lord Jesus Christ. And people denied Jesus, but he still gave himself and he still helped people. Even though God loved us so much and he sent his son, people on earth denied him. They desired for him to be murdered. And so it was granted to them. And the prince of life was killed. And God raised him from the dead. And there were witnesses. And the prince of life, of course, is Jesus. And God raised him from the dead. The word has been satisfied. We are instructed to repent and to follow Jesus and to be saved. And that is what is being instructed to the people in Acts. And we must also apply this to our life because we have to repent. We have to follow Jesus. We have to believe with our whole heart and our whole mind that Jesus came. He lived this life in human flesh but he lived this life perfectly, unlike any of us can do. And he was sacrificed. He was beaten. He was tortured. Sacrificed for our sins, for the sins of the human beings on this planet that God created. He sent his son for us to be saved and we sent him to be crucified we must repent and we must follow Jesus we must live by the word and this word has been fulfilled through Jesus God does exactly what he says he does not go back on promises. He does not go back on prophecy. He says it, it happens. And this is something that we need to just know. We may not understand. There's so much that we're not going to understand. But we have to accept and rest in the fact that Jesus was here and he died for our sins and only through Jesus Christ can we come to know God the instruction is clear and we have to have the heart to believe or be destroyed Jesus was raised to be the voice of God and raised also from the grave. We have the word. We had the witnesses. God gave us everything that we needed. But we are still human. All of the people during this time period, when this happened, were still human. I would hate to think that I would come to know Jesus, have a conversation with him, have him actually be in the time period that I am in and deny him and want him put to death. Like I, 
I would hate to think that I was that person. But yet, it happened. He was denied and he was crucified. And so we have this word. We have this Bible, this instruction from God that came even after Jesus to further instruct us on what was the truth, what is correct, and what we must live by. So stay in the word, my friends. If you are having a hard day, if you feel like you're wavering or you're pulling away, you're drifting from the path to Jesus and your walk with Jesus is being hindered in some way, your emotions are getting away, whatever it is, read the word of God. The word is available to us everywhere, especially here in America. We can go buy a Bible anytime we want. We can access the Bible from free on our phones. We just have a plethora of resources that we have access to. I know it's not the same in every country, but if you have access, read the Bible. Listen to the Bible. When you are in the car, listen to the Bible. When you're cleaning, listen to the Bible. If you're at work and it's allowed, put a headphone in, one or both, whatever, and listen to the word while you work. Pray all day long. Keep that connection with God. Because if you're in the word every day and you're praying to God every day, you're building this relationship every single day. It's going to be harder for you to veer off the path. Because if you're in the word, your mind is in the word, your heart is in the word, even if you're not feeling it one day. If you're in the word, it's still in your head. These instructions for our life is right here. We have a manual to go by. Everybody's always like, I wish there was an instruction manual for life or I wish there was an instruction manual for raising children and so on and so forth. There is. We have an instruction manual for our life. We have an instruction manual on raising kids, on being married, on having relationships with people in general. A guide on fellowship, a guide on love. We have the guide. We have the instruction manual and we need to put it to use. There are times where the enemy is going to get into your head. And then you're going to start going along the lines of, oh, I don't need to read the word. I don't need to bother with it today. I don't have time. So on and so forth. Or is what you're reading true? Is that really true? Do you really believe that? I mean, come on. Is that really possible? These things are going to sink into your brain sometimes. And you're going to have to fight it. And the only way to fight it is to have scripture in your heart and in your mind. When you receive the Son as your Savior, you receive His power. And you can experience what faith can do. Don't put your faith in what you have or what you can see. You have the ability to do amazing things if you believe in Jesus. Your relationship with Him is personal. And the Holy Spirit is in you, and it is very powerful. But you will never experience the supernatural until you surrender to His strength. 
when you are ready to live by the Spirit's power, you can have the ability to do so much bigger things than you could ever dream of. Don't limit yourself. Receive the Son as your Savior. The Holy Spirit is in you. Believe and pray and give yourself to the Lord. My beautiful friends, if you have not yet given your life to Christ, please, please do so. And if you need help or guidance, reach out to me or reach out to somebody in this community. Find a friend, find a family member, somebody that can help guide you on this path and direct you in the way in which you need to go. I love you guys so much and I pray that you give your life to Christ. Thank you guys so much for doing this Bible journaling entry with me. If you have anything that you would like to add or you have any comments or suggestions, please comment below. I love having these discussions with you guys. I really appreciate every single one of you and I hope to see you again next time. Bye y'all.